I hope you're having a great day and I hope you're staying safe at home. Today I want to talk again about meditation. We all know that meditation is good for us. Some of us say it's difficult for us to meditate. Some people say I can't sit for a minute to meditate. Some people say too many thoughts come into my mind. Some people say meditation is boring. Well, everyone has an opinion for everything. It doesn't matter. I'm going back to the science. Today, when you look at documented science, the beauty of what meditation does to the human brain is beyond phenomenal, beyond phenomenal. Go back 20 years ago, where the kind of stress that we have today was negligible compared to what it was years ago. Okay, things have changed now. We have more access to technology, bright light, blue light, you know, stress in every aspect of life and emotions, and it's at the highest point. How do we know that? Reflects in mental health, emotional health numbers, diseases like cancer, cardiovascular, stress-related condition, and inflammatory conditions. So we know the numbers are there. Okay, when you're naturally calm, you never have to meditate. Put yourself on an island, put yourself in the mountains, put yourself by a lake. You don't have to try to meditate. You're already in a state of meditation. Unless your mindset of meditation is you sitting cross-legged with a candle in front, no. Those are what images show you on social media. Meditation could, you be, could be you taking a walk on the beach and you are peaceful and you're happy and you're meditating. Meditation could, you, could be you playing a game of soccer. And in that one hour of soccer, you were so into the game, you couldn't think of your problems, you couldn't think of people, you couldn't think of anything. Meditation again, while you were baking that perfect cake, all you could do was in, be involved in the process. That was meditation too, and so is deep sleep. Meditation, but let's move back into the science. Meditation today in MRIs that are studying the brains of people who meditate, post-meditation, pre-meditation. Meditation changes your brain. It actually changes the physical structure of your brain, thickening certain parts of your brain that can help you with emotions, happiness, bliss, and all of those feelings. It also changes the way your brain waves work. We have brain waves. We have the alpha waves, we have the theta waves, we have the beta waves, we have the gamma waves that move us into deep sleep, relaxation, wakefulness. We have brain waves all the time. I say something to you right now, your brain waves are constantly vibrating. I say, I change my tone, I get angry with you, your brain waves are also gonna change. So like there are waves that go through our body, rhythms, circadian rhythms, the heart rhythm, the rhythm of your pulse, the rhythm of your brain, all of them are controlled by waves, which are frequencies, which is why you can listen to a band playing music and the music is beautiful. One band member makes a mistake, all of a sudden the music is now noise because the frequency got changed. So you see everything is frequency and waves, but the beauty of science is unbelievable. Are you looking at premature aging? Are you looking at reducing your age? Are you looking at anti-aging? Well, I can tell you right now, one of the most powerful ways to anti-age, when I say anti-age, you can't reverse it, but you can slow it down because most of us are aging way faster than we should, is meditation. How? It changes the waves of your brain, which can actually reduce today the rate at which we age. Number two, your immune system. For the longest time, science has proven to us that meditation and the immune system are directly connected. And today it breaks it down and shows us that when we meditate, even five minutes, 10 minutes, a minimum of 11 minutes, the body has the ability to produce, the immune system produces something called CD4 cells. What are CD4 cells? CD4 cells are helper cells. They're helper cells to your immune system to send a signal to your main immune system to destroy a virus, a bacteria, a pathogen, or a germ. Your immune system is working for you all the time. If you don't train it the right way, if you don't feed it the right way, it doesn't have the right intelligence to communicate, signaling. So the whole point is that meditation has the ability, rest, deep rest, Deep sleep has the ability to produce CD4 cells that helps us with our own protection. Number two, inflammation. Today, science is showing us in the brains of people who are meditating that their inflammatory markers come down. CRP levels, C-reactive protein inflammatory marker, ESR inflammatory marker. The thing is, inflammation is good for us. It's protective. The problem is when inflammation doesn't switch off. It starts to destroy us, attack us, and create every single problem related to every single lifestyle disease. But meditation helps us to reduce 
Now you must be thinking, Luke, how long should I meditate for all these amazing, amazing functions? A minimum of 10, 15, 20 minutes, five minutes, it doesn't matter. I can meditate five minutes in the morning, five minutes after lunch, five minutes before bedtime, it's great for me. The point is coming to the third most important thing is your telema activity. Telemas are so important for you. You would love to read up about telemas. It is just fascinating. Telemas bring and protect our chromosomes. DNA, go back to that little computer chip in your cell that controls everything. It can switch on a cancer gene, it can switch it off. It can switch on an autoimmune gene, it can switch it off. Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, everything. It can switch on a gene that makes you age rapidly and it can also switch it off to bring it back to its normal rate. But when these telomeres start to get destroyed because of pollution, because of stress, because of insufficient nutrition, overtraining, under recovery, the telomere activity starts to decrease and that affects our chromosome stability. Anything that affects the little computer in every cell that controls every activity in the body, as you can now see, will be detrimental to your health. And as humans, we want to put on band-aids and creams and allopitic medicines and chant more and all of that stuff. It may help. But if there's damage happening at a chromosome level, nothing's going to help unless you address the root cause. So the beauty of meditation is now scientifically proven to improve telomere activity at a cellular level in our body. Something as simple as deep relaxation. You don't want to use the word meditation, that's fine. Let's call it deep relaxation. Can you sit in nature for 10 to 15 minutes and just be in nature? Can you sit by a mountainside, by a beach? Can you close your eyes and just focus on your breath? And every time thoughts come, let the thoughts come and let them go. Come back to the breath. Even if you have to do it a hundred times, do it a hundred times because doing it a hundred times is what's gonna help you get perfect. Okay, you can never stop thoughts from coming in your mind. Impossible. There is no one in the world who closes their eyes to sit down to meditate, closes their eyes and they move directly into a deep state of meditation. No, they, see, they keep anchoring themselves and the more they do it, the better they get it, and the quicker they move into a deeply meditative state. You can cultivate the practice of mindfulness, which teaches us to be mindful at every aspect of our day. I have a cup of coffee, okay? I'm holding this cup of coffee. I'm smelling it, it smells good, I'm connecting with it. Oh, which bean is that? Oh, awesome, it's warm now. I'm gonna take a sip of it. How does it feel on my tongue? How does it feel after I ingest it? But people are like, just coffee, 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 mindlessly, no connection. With that, with your water, with your food, with all your actions. When you bring awareness with action, it equals mindfulness. Mindfulness equals relaxation. So if you don't wanna call it meditation, you can call it deep relaxation. Can I just even sit with my eyes closed? with some really soft music and be deeply sitting in silence. Relaxation again, meditation again, great for the brain waves, great to change the way your brain works. There's a beautiful Harvard study where they show a group of people meditating for eight weeks and they have a complete change in their brain, the actual physical brain after eight weeks. There's another beautiful study. We're gonna publish all of these studies. They're already published. We're just gonna put it up on our blog later. 50 HIV positive patients meditate for six weeks in a row and their CD4 count, which is extremely important in an HIV patient or any patient who has low immunity, increases. So now just think when you add meditation to your chemotherapy, your radiation, your cancers, your diabetes, your Alzheimer's, or even if you're just healthy, how can you get healthier? How can you slow down aging? How can you improve the quality of your skin, your hair, your digestion and everything without you trying too hard but getting your intelligence in your body to work for you? Meditation again. Now, most people are surprised, but Luke, meditation is free. Everyone just needs to do it for five minutes. Why don't people do it? Because people take anything that's free for granted. You take anything for free for granted. How many of you remember the last 15 free meals you had? You don't. It was exciting while you ate it because you didn't have to pay money for it. It was free. But how many of you expect, remember that last meal where you probably spent about 2,000, 5,000, 10,000 for that sit down sushi dinner? It was an experience. You got value out of it. You paid money. It's valuable to you. You see, you take for granted what is free. Oxygen is free, yet you got to remind people how to breathe. Exercise is free, yet you got to motivate and inspire people how to exercise well. Eating clean is free yet you've got to motivate and uh, inspire people because they take it for granted. 
Anything that is free is taken for granted. You need to understand that. And that's why everyone out there trying to sell you free stuff, sell you free stuff, it's always a bait to take something later. Because they know the human mind, the best way to get the human mind into a system is by giving it something free. But we also know all the free stuff that you've taken before in the past has added no value or little value to your life. Because where there is value, there will have to be some sort of expense, which is not always money. It could be your time, it could be your effort, it could be discipline. So coming back to meditation, we can go on and on with, this, with the beautiful benefits of meditation. The point is, are you gonna start doing it? People say, I'm too busy to meditate, but they have time for social media. If you have 10 minutes for social media, you have 10 minutes to meditate. If you have 10 minutes to scroll mindlessly on Facebook, you have 10 minutes to meditate. If you have 10 minutes to think about all the things that people are talking behind your back, you have 10 minutes to meditate. Where there's a will, there's a way. Now, you can decide to do this because in a world that we live like today, where there is emotional stress, negativity, we're surrounded by stuff all the time. We need that anchor more than ever. We need that anchor. How many of you take a holiday and you don't even feel like you need to meditate because your holiday is so beautiful, it's meditative in itself. But when you come back to your routine lives and stuff, you feel all the more need to reconnect with yourself because you're being pulled in all directions. Learn to meditate, it's the most beautiful thing. Teach your children to meditate. Don't make a big deal out of meditation, okay? <clears throat> Everyone makes a big deal out of everything. You can be anywhere. You don't have to be in your room on your yoga mat. You can be anywhere where you just close your eyes and focus on your breath for two to three minutes. Guess what, you meditated. Don't make a big deal. Everyone wants to add complication to everything. Oh, I want to meditate. I need to get a guru. I need to get this. I need to get organic scented candles. I need to dress in a certain way. No, you can meditate naked for all anyone cares. The point is start doing it. Start doing it. Stop making a big deal about it. You're in a car, meditate. Not if you're the driver. Sit in the back seat, meditate. Someone's engaged you in a boring conversation. You gotta listen. They're sitting in front talking. Close your eyes and meditate. You have so many instances to meditate until you bring the complication in your life. You have 10 minutes between your next call, you have 10 minutes between your next meeting, meditate. Where there is a will, there is a way, but I can guarantee you one thing, meditation will change every aspect in your life. How? Because I'm saying it, no, because it works. It teaches you to be more mindful in your relationships, in the way you deal with your colleagues, your business partners, or your own self. When you're mindful, you realize how much of how many parts of your life is just a facade that you have to maintain because your self-esteem is so low? But through mindfulness, you learn to accept that and you learn to make changes. That is the beauty and that's why I said it can impact every aspect of your life. The people who say, I can't meditate, I can't sit still, are the ones who need it the most. Guess what, try. Okay, you're not gonna be spoon-fed comfort all the time just because you say you can't do it, okay? You know, it doesn't make you special in any way. The answer is do it and do it over again until you get it. Okay, don't feel entitled that everything in life has to be easy. Meditation can be difficult, but just get used to failing. The point is no one wants to try because no one wants to fail. So if you sit down today to meditate and you fail in five minutes, big deal. Do it again tomorrow and then again and again and again. Just because you failed and you don't want to face that failure, okay, then you have a big problem with your self-esteem. You have a big problem with your ego and pride. It's okay to fail to get better at something. Have a great day, everyone. Until next time, eat smart, move more, sleep right, and breathe deep. And remember, you care is all about you.